Hi guys! Hope you're all doing well. As you can see from the title of this video, this is my Q&A video. Now I mentioned a few videos back in my channel update that I was thinking about doing a Q&A and that I hadn't been sure whether to go for it or not and I'd asked if anyone wanted to ask a question to leave it in the comments down below and a few of you did so I was really pleased with that and I thought that I'd sit down today and answer them. So to make sure this video is not half an hour long like I'm prone to, I'm just going to get started. So the first question comes from Julia Linnea, I hope that I have pronounced that correctly. Um, but Julia asks, do you have, oh by the way I've got my laptop here with the questions in front of me. Um, but Julia asks, do you have any favourite films? Well. This is a complicated question, I could be here for quite some time. I did a movies tag video with Roisin probably about two years ago now, it was a while ago, um, and basically we tried to answer that question and failed miserably. But I do have two go-to answers for that question. Um, I've got lots of different favourite films for different sort of moods, but two that I will always, always love and that I know I can watch at any time and they will always cheer me up are Silver Linings Playbook, which I just adore, I love the cast, I love the story, I love the music, I love everything about this film. If you haven't seen it, please go and watch it. It deals with friendship and love and romance and family and mental illness and deals with it all in a very, very nice way. It's based on a book which I actually haven't read, I keep meaning to read the book and I haven't got around to it, but it's wonderful and I love it. The fact that it got nominated for it and won so many awards, I think sometimes makes people think like it will be overrated but actually I don't think so, I think it's incredible. And the second film is completely different because this one's a cartoon but it is Anastasia. I have loved Anastasia since the first time that I saw it when I was a very small child and I can say every single line of this film, I can sing every single lyric of every song with my eyes closed. I love it so so much. If you've never seen Anastasia definitely go and watch it. So the next question is from Annie over at Annie Time. Hi Annie, I love your channel, you know I do and I appreciate so much all of the comments that you leave me because Annie's one of the loveliest people on YouTube. If you haven't subscribed to her channel, go and check out her channel right now. Um, but Annie has asked a couple of really great questions so I'm excited to answer these. Question one, for some reason you have to live at Glen Bogle with only one of the characters from the show for at least five years Given that you have enough food and the estate's very basic function will be looked after regardless, no dead animals, starvation or crop failure if they don't know how to look after basic things, who do you choose? Now if you don't know what Glen Bogle is, if you've never seen Monarch of the Glen, it is a wonderful sort of magical TV show set in the Scottish Highlands. It ran for about eight years in the sort of early, sort of late 90s, early 2000s sort of time. I can't remember when it actually started but I was obsessed with Monarch of the Glen. Anyone who watches it and thinks that this is an accurate representation of life in Scotland, I'm just going to shatter your illusions right now and say that this is not a realistic representation. But it's lovely, it's very heartwarming and sweet and silly at times, but just one of these really feel-good TV shows. So Monarch of the Glen, the estate that the characters live on, they live on a sort of grand estate in the Highlands and it's called Glen Bogle. Um, the character that I think that I would want to be stuck with for five years, I had to give this a lot of thought actually because my automatic instinct was to say Archie because when I was younger I had such a crush on Archie McDonald. I really did. I just loved him. He was one of my like quite early TV crushes. Um, so I kind of just went to say Archie and then I was like, no, I'm not going to go with him. That's too obvious. The reason that I'm going for him is because I fancy him and that's not right. Um, so after a lot of sort of thought I've decided that I'd want to be stuck with Duncan. Duncan is a daft boy a lot of the time but he is so sweet and caring and he loves his friends and he always wants to just do the best that he can for his friends, be there for the people that he cares about and I just feel like you would be occasionally driven a little bit mad by him but for the most part you would just feel entertained and loved and appreciated by Duncan. He's such a sweet guy and I do think that if there was one of the characters that you had to spend like five years solely with, he would be the one that would be, he'd be the one who would kind of get you through that. If for some reason you were trapped there and you weren't allowed to leave and you couldn't go anywhere, he would be the one who would kind of help just keep the, keep the mood light and keep things sort of ticking over until you got to leave. So I would go with Duncan. Question two. What scene from a movie or TV show do you most wish had happened in your own life? Now, there are many scenes from Once Upon a Time that I wish had happened in my real life, um, which I could go on a long, long list of, but I'm not going to do that. What I decided to eventually pick was, and I don't want to put any spoilers out on this if people haven't seen the film, but 
the scene on the ice rink in the park in Serendipity. The second one. That I love. And that just highlights that I'm just this like big ball of like gooey romantic nonsense when it comes to cute TV shows and films, but that scene is just sort of iconic and magical and lovely and I would love if that happened to me. I'm going to New York in a couple of weeks, probably not going to be going on the ice rink, but you never know. And question three, what kind of old lady do you think you'll be most like 50 years from now? Mrs Slocum from Are You Being Served, Professor McGonagall from Harry Potter, Hyacinth Bookie, hopefully not, Grandma Yetta from The Nanny, Mrs Cropley from season one of Vicar of Dibley, or Judy Dench in real life? This is another excellent question and having given it some thought, I don't know that I will be, but who I would most like to be like 50 years from now would be Judy Dench in real life. She's just total queen. So if I could be like Judy Dench 50 years from now, that's probably a slight insult to Judy Dench. How old is Judy Dench now? I don't know, hold on, I'm gonna Google. Jeez, oh, she is older than I had anticipated. Yeah, 50 years from now, I would like to be like Judy Dench. The next questions come from Dee over at Prompt by Dee. If you haven't checked out her blog or her YouTube channel, I will link them in the description box below. You really should, she is lovely. I've chatted to her a bit on Twitter and she seems like the loveliest girl, so please go and check out her channel. Her questions are amazing. Um, so first question was, if you could make a new color, what color would you make and what would you call it? Now this is a slightly nightmarish scenario for me because I can't name things. If and when I ever have children, it's going to be a nightmare because I genuinely like naming things. When I was a kid, I used to write stories. I used to write loads of stories when I was a child. I could write the whole story, no bother. Giving it a title, couldn't ever settle in anything. So naming things is not my strong suit, so I still haven't come up with a name yet. I will come back to that. If in a couple of weeks or months or whatever I come up with a name for this colour, I will put it somewhere across the screen here. Um, but I feel like it would be somewhere between a pink and a red, um, because I really enjoy both pink and red. And I feel like there's a lot of those like really strong pinks that lean slightly to the kind of reddish side um, that I just really, really love. I don't wear a lot of these colours because I am someone who forever lives in monochrome. I'm constantly wearing black. Um, but I would say that in terms of if I was to invent something new, I would want it to be in that sort of like warm pinkish red hue that I can't think of a name for, but yeah, somewhere in that sort of colour, somewhere in that area of the colour spectrum. Question two is, what has been your favourite TV show of 2016 so far? Oh, that's difficult because you know me, I have so many. Um, I think I would probably say, and this isn't a show that started in 2016, it is a show that, um, although does it need to be one that started in 2016? If it's one that needed to start in 2016, I'll have to give this some more thought. Um, the one that's been my favourite to watch that I have watched in 2016 and I hadn't watched before that is Arrow. I started watching Arrow in about June, May or June time, I think probably about May. Um, and I'd never watched it before. I knew that I would enjoy it when I finally did, but I'd just not got around to it yet. And I started watching it then and binged the first three seasons and was totally obsessed with them. And then got season four when the DVD came out and watched all of season four just a couple of weeks ago. And I absolutely adore it. Season five started. I haven't seen the first episode yet, but I am very excited about it. And I just, oh, Oliver Queen, I love. And Felicity, I love. And it, there's a lot of things about the show that I love. So I would say that for me, for a show that I have started to experience in 2016, even though it didn't start this year, I would say my favourite show is Arrow. And question three, if you could remake a film, what film would you remake and why? Um, I don't know, I struggled with this one a wee bit because I'm, you guys know this, I'm more of a TV person than I am film and I know what TV show I would remake so I'm going to just use TV show for this particular question. Um, and say that I never watched Sex and the City when it was on. Um, it just wasn't, even though it was this massive show, it wasn't something that I ever watched. But I would kind of really love to remake Sex and the City with like four of my favourite actresses. So I feel like I would recast it and have like Jennifer Morrison, Kristen Bell, um, Mindy Kaling and Leighton Meester as like the four main ones. And just, I feel like I would then experience Sex and the City for, not for the first time because I've seen bits and pieces of it, but I would watch it as like 
it would be like a new thing for me but just with some of my favourite actresses so I think that that would be fun. Well hello there, it's Lindsay from the future. Just realised that there is a very obvious answer to this question which I did not use and I don't know why it never occurred to me at the time that I was filming but if I was to remake a film now what would I choose and why? I would remake either Serendipity or Just Like Heaven with Jennifer Morrison and Colin O'Donoghue. If you're a Captain Swan Chipper, I'm sure you will thank me for that idea. And question four, song stuck in your head at the moment. I, oh, I'm terrible for this. I get a lot of songs stuck in my head. If I hear something on the radio, it just kind of sticks for a while. Um, but I would say the one that has been playing on a bit of a loop for the longest at the moment is Ailey Golding, Still Falling For You, from the Bridget Jones soundtrack. Oh, I just adore that song. Again, I think I'm highlighting in this video that I just have this huge, big, like, ridiculously romantic side to me. Um, and that song's just, like... It's so cute. Have you seen the new Bridget Jones film? If you haven't seen it, go and see it. It's so good and cute and will just make you feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Um, and that song has been playing on a loop in my head since way before I went to see the film because the minute it was released, I listened to it, downloaded it, it has been on repeat on my playlist pretty much ever since. The next questions are from Andrea over at Je suis juste moi. I love Andrea. I put out a tweet last night telling you guys to go and subscribe to her channel because she's just so incredibly lovely. Go and check out her channel, she's doing Vlogtober at the moment and doing a really good job with it so go and check her out. And hi to Andrea if you're watching this. So Andrea has asked what is the first TV show you remember watching? In terms of like kids TV I remember watching um, Play Days. If you are a child in the UK I'm sure you'll remember Play Days. It was on CBBC. It was basically there was a pl this sounds so ridiculous. Um, the show was called Play Days, but it started off in the sort of opening title sequence. Um, the characters were on a bus, and so it was called the Play Bus, and the Play Bus would go to a different stop for each episode. So usually each week, um, you would have an episode each day at a different stop, um, and each stop was for one of the different characters. So there was the Y Bird stop, which was like this bird, and it was on a sort of carousel, and there was the Poppy stop, and Poppy was a Liverpudlian cat. Um, who lived in a house and it would go and sort of go to her house and there were a few different characters it was really lovely and cute and I remember that very vividly and then in terms of getting a little bit older the first TV show that I really remember getting into when I was at a sort of slightly older age was Sabrina the Teenage Witch very vivid memories of sitting down to watch Sabrina and then in terms of other sorts of TV just because I've watched them my, pretty much my entire life I remember watching Home and Away and Neighbours from quite a young age not necessarily at a young age being really aware of what was going on but then as I got older starting to get to grips with the storylines and stuff and watching them with my mum every single day so those are probably the ones that I remember most clearly from when I was young. Next question is who are your favourite beauty youtubers? Now I used to watch lots of beauty youtubers, I really did, I watched loads of them and that's what got me into youtube really was makeup um, that side for me has sort of dipped a lot recently and over the past couple of years I've watched a lot less beauty content um, but there are still some people who I'll always click on their videos one, I'm just going to give a plug to her because she's one of my friends um, but Roisin over at Rose Kate's um, she does lots of brilliant hauls, great skincare advice go and check out her videos for good skincare advice she's brilliant and she does a lot of great beauty videos so love her obviously Nikki from Nikki Tutorials I could watch just put on foundation forever and it would just soothe me. Her makeup looks are always so beautiful, her eye makeup's always stunning, she does such dramatic amazing looks but for me it's watching her do her base and I know that for a lot of people it, like it's a lot of makeup so she'll put on like really intense like high coverage foundation and concealer and I know that some people would watch it and be like that's far too much makeup but I don't think there's any such thing. I love watching her put on her makeup. Also Shan over at Shan X XOXO XXO. I'll link her channel in the description box. Shan is great. I love her channel. I love her looks for this really the same reason as Nikki's. She does a lot of like really fun, colourful, different looks. I love watching her get ready with me videos. They're great. Um so yeah, definite thumbs up for her. And I still love Fleur de Force and I love um Pixie Woo. I still am subscribed to these channels. I don't necessarily watch every single video, but I do still love their videos for makeup and beauty tips. And the next question from Andrea is, what is your favourite thing to do in New York City? Oh, so many. Um, the last time that we were there, Top of the Rock was a huge highlight for me and Central Park obviously was a huge highlight for me. So 
those two places are probably really high up on the list of just things to do in New York. I also love the Natural History Museum. I just could have stayed there all day, which I think we're going to do one of the days this trip. So um, really would highly recommend them and they were some of my favourite things to do. The Top of the Rock visit, we went in the evening sort of time and it was just the most beautiful, spectacular view. So that was incredible. However, I really enjoyed just walking around in New York, just walking around the streets, walking along Madison Avenue and Lexington Avenue and Park Avenue and finding yourself on these streets, um, walking down Broadway, like being on these streets and just walking about and feeling this sort of, there's, there is a sort of weirdly almost like magical atmosphere I think and maybe that's just me because I'm so ridiculously excited about New York but that's part of what I really enjoyed about it was just getting to kind of walk about and see there's there's always something to see there's always something to look at um, and yeah that's definitely a highlight for me. The next questions come from Confessions of a Slimmer. That's three really good questions I really like these questions. Um, so question one what is your favourite restaurant in Glasgow? I have loads, there's a few that um, my friends and I tend to kind of go to on a loop, but I would say one of my favourites is the Trading House. Now the reason that I love the Trading House is I really like the food, I think the food's very good, but their cocktail menu is excellent and I'm a big fan of a nice cocktail, so their cocktail menu is fantastic and I also really love the atmosphere and the decor in the Trading House, it's absolutely beautiful, the way that it's all decorated and laid out. Is just stunning and so I really like being there just to kind of sit and kind of drink in the atmosphere so I would probably say that the trading house is maybe my favorite I really like Gusto and I really like October they are both really lovely um, and places that I would highly recommend so yeah they're a couple of favorites next question is favorite designer now I am not an expert when it comes to fashion at all my wardrobe is very much a lot of black <laughs> and I wouldn't particularly consider myself someone who's particularly knowledgeable about fashion but one thing that I do quite enjoy doing is watching some of the runway shows at Fashion Week. I think there's part of me that enjoys like the art side of fashion quite a lot um, and someone who never lets me down um, is Badgley Mishka. I adore the Badgley Mishka shows every single year. Their collections are just... they're so beautiful and almost like slightly fairy tale feminine like um I really enjoy I'm just going to be honest I really really enjoy like pretty floaty dresses um and nice sort of floral detail and that kind of thing I'm just would go nuts for um and I feel like with Badger Meshka there's some shows where on the runway you look at it and you go this is spectacular as art and on a runway show it looks incredible but I couldn't realistically imagine wearing that or I couldn't realistically imagine anyone wearing that but I do think that Badger Mishka do a really good job of balancing really beautiful stunning artistic creations that on the catwalk look just flawless and beautiful but you could imagine wearing them you could look at their dresses and go if I was going to like a really fancy thing like wait I would wear that and that's what I quite like about them. I think that they keep it kind of magical, but in a slightly more wearable way, which I really enjoy. And question three is dream holiday. Oh, there's so many places that I want to go. My travel bucket list is huge. Um, I would say at the moment, probably because I've been to New York and I'm going to New York again, and it was very high up, on, it was top of my travel list for ages. Um, next would probably be Canada. One of my friends did a train, took the train from Toronto to Vancouver earlier this year and I just, oh, I would love to do that now. I feel like Canada has a lot of beautiful places to experience and in terms of city, I would really love to go to Toronto. One of my favourite TV shows being Erica's set in Toronto um, and I think that I would just love to go and walk about there. I think it would be great, but I would really love to go to Vancouver and go and see a lot of the kind of landscape that I feel is quite similar to the Scottish landscape. Annie actually commented on that in my recent Aviemore vlog. If you watched that, I'll link it in the description box, but um, it was just a vlog of some of the beautiful places. Can I just apologise right now for the lighting? Um, the sun's come out, of course. But yeah, she commented and said that she thought the landscape was quite similar to a lot of her favourite places in Canada. Um, and so I think that I would feel quite at home in Canada and it just looks beautiful. So I would love to go there. I also really want to go back to Australia. Um, I went to Australia in 2013 for two months and did a bit of kind of, I travelled from place to place 
but I would really love to go back to Sydney. Um, there's just places in Sydney that I feel like because when I was there I wasn't really sure what I was doing and I was thinking that I might stay and work for a while and then I changed my mind and I was coming home and whatever. Um, I feel like there's certain places in Sydney that I didn't probably appreciate as much as I should have when I was there. Um, I also have family out there so I'd really love to go back there and I would really love to go to Iceland. Iceland's very much up there um, on places to see for me. So I'm going to leave it there. That's part one of my q and I thought that I could film this all in one go but there are actually more questions than I had anticipated and the lighting has gone to pot. As you can see I have moved. <laughs> from sitting slightly further towards the end of the couch to over here because the sun's come out and is now streaming through the window and it's just making it not workable. So I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much for your questions and I will be back very soon with part two. Thanks so much for watching guys. I'll speak to you again soon. Bye.